pitcher Andrew Heaney. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're glad you're here. Welcome to Texas. And the first thing I have to ask you is, before you took a picture with him, did you know how giant your general manager is? I knew how big he was. I knew how tall he was. Uh, yeah, getting to meet him here in person, shaking his hand. I was like, man, he, like I'm not like a I'm not a short person by any means, but man, he makes me feel short. So, yeah, it's, I'm sure that's that comes in handy, you know, if he needs to intimidate some people. Well, Andrew, you had a great year last year for the Dodgers, and your ERA was outstanding. Can you talk about what happened last year to really have that great season? Yeah, I mean, it, it really started with kind of reinventing um, my slider, uh, kind of re-envisioning how, how I'm throwing that, um, changed up a grip, kind of a different thought process with it. Um, really worked hard with, with Mark Pryor and Connor McGinnis, uh, the pitching guys there on a couple mechanical things and just kind of a, just sort of a process of how to go about like, you know, rethinking that slider. So just kind of trying to shorten it up, a um, little bit less movement, a little more velo, and then kind of understanding how to best, uh, how to best use that uh, off of my, off my fastball. You, did you grow up in Oklahoma city or just outside of it? I did. Yeah. Born and raised in Oklahoma city. Did you ever eat at Chileno's in Bricktown? Yeah, I've eaten at Chilinos a lot, and I, I I grew up going to to um, Oklahoma City Redhawks. You know when they were the Rangers yeah. affiliate. Um, yeah, I, I went to a, a lot of games there. Man, that was sorry. That was like uh, my restaurant. My wife went to OU, yeah. and I understand yeah. we have a now we have a conflict. But uh, also, also <laughs> a smart answer there by incorporating the Rangers into Oklahoma yes. talk. That was yeah. a smart answer yeah. by you. Well yeah. done. No, I mean, I mean, it's it's a real thing. I mean, I. My mom used to, for my birthday in the summer, would would I get to bring a friend and come to a Rangers game? That was kind of like a birthday gift for me. So, um, you know, I I got to you know see the see the Red Hawks in Oklahoma City and got to go see the big club, you know, once once or twice a year, and that was always a really really fun experience. So, um, definitely definitely familiar and and uh, comfortable kind of with with the the Rangers, you know, being close to home. The, and Kevin, I don't know if you know this or not. They give you free queso at Chilenos. Actually, I think they closed oh. their building down there, but because it's too a great much memory, too much free queso. Yeah. You probably think? so. Yeah, probably <laughs> it was the best part of it. Dude. It was awesome. There's, there's a lot been changing in downtown Oklahoma City. You know, got got the got the Oklahoma City Thunder there, and that's really the downtown's changed a lot. Now, I, I'm always curious about this when you go into negotiations about where you're going to go. I get it. Years, money. I think we all understand how important that is. But how, how important is it talking with the team about how they envision what your role is or how they envision what they're going to be doing over the span of your contract? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a huge factor. I mean, obviously, like you're you're trying to figure out a place that you feel like you can be successful, a place that you feel like you can win, a place that you feel like it's going to understand and support you and and kind of be able to help you know help you grow um and then also a place that you feel like you know you're you're comfortable your family can be comfortable you know that there's a great fan base and a an appetite for for winning and for baseball and so i think all those things factor into it i mean it's you know there's there's so many things and like you said i mean money and and all that you know can can be a motivating factor you know but um you know i th i think that uh you know i, I i've I've played in, in in plenty of places and understand, you know, like what good organizations do and how they operate. And I really felt like I got that vibe here and talking to CY and talking to Boach on, you know, our Zoom call and then, you know, talking to them uh, kind of moving forward. You know, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm excited to get going and, and happy to be down here. I, I don't know if you feel comfortable, if you can give us any insight about telling us more about how you can be successful and how this franchise can be successful because we all love the Rangers, but clearly it's been hard times around the Metroplex. So what did they say or what did you hear that leads you down that path? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I think for me, like the, a lot of it is talking to see why, um, and kind of his vision and, and, and also like the, the actions that he's taking, obviously like, Last year signing, you know, Seager and Simeon, uh, this year signing DeGrom and then, you know, myself. And so I understand, like, I understand that, you know, that they are putting their money where their mouth is, um, but also, like, you know, getting to to understand the, the process in which, you know, they, they have the pitching lab here and things that I'm familiar with, comfortable with, used in, in L.A. and understand. Um, and then also, like, are on board and, 
and comfortable and, and willing to kind of help me take the next step, which is, you know, like I said, like I want to continue a lot of the things mechanically fastball slider that I was doing in, in LA and um, would like to, you know, start mixing my change up in a little bit better. Something that I worked on last year and, um, you know, had been, had been working on this off season and something that I think could be really key to kind of help him unlock some, some easier outs for me uh, this past, this next year. So, um, you know, I think understanding and being able to support that. And then, like I said, like the, you know, just the comfort and, and, and everything with, with the area, the fans, the, the team. I mean, I think all those things just kind of factor into it. Andrew, in uh, my baseball career, I got to play with Tom Glavin at one point. He goes from the Braves to the Mets, and it was like, oh, my gosh, one of my childhood heroes and a, a guy yeah. that I really look up to I'm going to get to play with. And last year you got to play with Clayton Kershaw. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. what it was like getting to be on Clayton Kershaw's team and maybe getting to pick his brain. Honestly, I think just like seeing how he works – Every day. I mean, he's a tireless worker, um, and he's obviously extremely, extremely talented. Um, but but the work that he put in and the way that he approached every day, the way that he treated teammates, I mean, like, he's, you know, just such a great guy. Um, you know, I can't say enough great things about Kirsch. And, and I think, to me, like, that, that's, the, like, he doesn't say it, like, he just does it. I mean, he literally just goes out there and just works, you know, harder than it seem, seemingly everybody that's in the stadium. Um, and so I, I think just, just recognizing that was, was enough for me to, you know, to just try and, try and emulate that as best as possible. Do you have, you have any, like, friends on this Rangers club that you're like, oh, yeah, I played with him or somebody that you know pretty well? I really, I really don't. Um, no, I really don't. Um, there's, there's guys I've played against. I mean, John Gray went to OU, played against him a little bit. Like obviously, like Seeger and Simeon, and you know, I, I, I don't think I told it, but um, you know, I saw Jonah, Jonah Heim today, and you know, faced him in spring training, hit a homer off me. So I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've faced a lot of these guys, and. I'm sure Seeger and Simeon have probably also hit homers <laughs> off me too, but you know what I mean? Uh, you know, just getting to face these guys and, you know, sometimes you kind of get a feel for guys, even just playing against them. And, and so I know the, you know, the types of people they are, obviously like the reputation of, of them and, and the Rangers and how they're doing things precedes itself. Um, a lot of the Dodgers guys talked about, you know, being in the playoffs here in 2020, um, really how much they enjoyed, you know, being, in the stadium and how, you know, the, you know, Dodgers, Dodgers were being taken care of by all the, you know, Rangers people and staff and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think that that goes a long way to, to understanding how this organization operates. As soon as we finish up with this interview, if you want us to text you names of people that you really should yeah. get to know on the team and people that you should <laughs> stay away from, we can facilitate that. There you go. Yeah, spill all the tea for me. There you go. Now, on a on a more serious note, because obviously people get to know you as baseball players, but in, in a certain aspect, they probably feel like they are getting to know you as people. I, I was kind of hoping for people who aren't familiar with this, if you could walk us back from a few years ago kind of the emotions and what happened when you took the mound after the mm -hmm. very sad death of Tyler Skaggs. Yeah, I mean, um, um, yeah, I mean, obviously that there is a, there is a tough, uh, a tough feeling a little bit around Texas. Obviously this is, um, this is where he passed and this is, was a place that, um, it was at the old stadium back then, but I mean, obviously a place that, uh, you know, has some, some tough memories for me. Um, but, um, you know, just, uh, remembering him as, as a guy and as a teammate and, you know, as a, a friend, I mean, I really felt like he was probably my closest friend on that angels team. And, um, you know, somebody that, uh, really balanced me out well. I'm I'm a little bit of an introvert, uh, a little bit of a, you know, s can be socially awkward sometimes in big groups. I don't love big groups, and he was kind of somebody who always seemingly fit in and knew how to, um, you know, knew how to talk to people and make people feel good. And and uh, so he really balanced me out, and I really enjoyed, um, you know, our friendship. And uh, you know, got to, 
got plenty of good memories with him and, and, and I'm kind of hoping to, to put some good memories in, in Texas and kind of feel, uh, feel like there's some, some, uh, you know, positivity to, to kind of, to kind of come from, come from here for me, you know. Uh, Andrew Heaney joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3, the fan home of the Texas Rangers. Uh, how for how how much are you looking forward to to pitching against the stupid Astros? <laughs> we yeah, don't like those I guys. mean, I've uh, yeah, I've uh, I think I've made my feelings known about that. <laughs> um, you know, I've I like to think that I've moved on, um, but at the same time, like I don't care what uniform anybody's wearing. Like I'm trying to trying to beat the guy across from me. I'm trying to trying to put those guys away. So. Um, I'm, I'm excited about facing them. I'm excited to kind of see what the, the Texas rivalry is all about. You know, I've kind of been the, the in-division rival before, but I want to, you know, I want to see it from a from an in-state, you know, see how that kind of heats up. And, you know, I'm just ready to get going. doesn't matter who we're playing. Well, Andrew, you mentioned John Gray and you mentioned OU. So you grew up in OU country, but you chose Oklahoma State. Was that always Ooh. the place you wanted to go to or – how did that? How did that come about? Going to Oklahoma State. Hey man, I grew up in Oklahoma City. There's plenty of Cowboy fans there too. They're not. They're not. They're not all OU fans. You guys don't have a monopoly on Oklahoma. So, <laughs> um, no nah, man. I, I uh, Frank Anderson was the head coach there. Um, you know, for for a lot of reasons. You know, he was well regarded as a pitching coach, um, specifically with lefties. Obviously, his son Brett was a really good. You know, still a really good left-handed pitcher. Um, you know, and and a a place that I felt really comfortable and felt like, um, you know, being in state, being, being somewhat close to home, but also, um, being on a, in a, in a program that is, and has been, you know, really competitive, um, and good at baseball and a place that I felt like I could develop. I mean, I got, I got drafted by the Rays in like the 24th round. And, um, when I got drafted, I was six, one and 142 pounds or something like that. Wiry. Um, yeah, so like I just I knew that I wasn't going to I knew I wasn't going to stand up to the rigors of, you know, of of professional baseball at that age and knew I needed to go to college and that was just a place that I, I felt really comfortable and and obviously like I'm extremely happy I made that decision because Frank was a great coach, Oklahoma State was great to me and still are great to me and so a place that I uh, really felt like home. See, I can already tell you're going to fit in super well here yep. because maybe not a big fan of OU uh -huh. or the Astros. You are speaking <laughs> to our fan base right there. They're already like, man, I love this guy. Well, I, I got to tell you, I'm also a diehard Oklahoma City Thunder fan. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah, I know. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've definitely been on the other side of, uh, of rooting against Luka. So, you know, I'm going to have to probably uh, – Gonna have to probably make some friends there, but that'll be tough. But what's your thought yeah. on Poku? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, like, I, all right, I gotta, I gotta out myself here. I was probably one of the bigger Poku haters. There probably was. Yes! I mean, it was just like, I don't see it. I don't understand it. But I mean, I don't know how. Like, obviously, you guys follow it. He's been unreal this year. Like, he's been really, really good. And the thing that's crazy, man, is like he's still so young. Like he's he's I think he's like 21 years old. Like it's he's crazy. Only 20. Like 20. Yeah. I mean, like it's insane. Like some of these guys, the Thunder, the Thunders. The, I, I read a thing. This year's team is the second youngest team ever in the NBA. Second only to last year's team, which was the youngest ever. So it's like all these guys are just a year older and a, you know a year more wise. And yes, like I understand Poku. It's it's as a fan, it's amazing. It's just an emotional roller coaster watching him play. It's like the highs and the lows come right back to back. But yeah, man, I'm. Uh, it's. I. I. I've. I have had to. Uh, you know, had to. Had to admit when I was wrong on on the Poku thing. So. Well, you know what? It's okay to not admit if you think you're wrong because we you've been drug into a very heated argument that we had two days ago about Poku versus Josh Green that kind of came out of nowhere. So I appreciate your insights right there. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Josh Green's a great player too. So it's it's that's uh, <laughs> that's not an easy one. That's that's a tough debate. It got heated. I I, I just saw, and I'm I'm kind of curious about this because my daughter, we take her up to Cleveland Clinic uh, a couple times uh, a year, and I've seen the impact that it makes in the in the hospital when people are there for days of having having like a dog come through uh, yeah, or having yeah. an animal come through or, or even teaching music lessons and stuff like that. And I see that y'all implemented a dog program at, yeah. uh, at a children's hospital. Can you talk about that yeah. for me? 
Yeah, so we had, uh, my wife and I would go on uh, on the visits to Chalk, the Children's Hospital of Orange County, uh, right there. I mean, literally, a, a, not less than a mile away from, from Angel Stadium. And my wife and I are huge dog lovers. We've got two dogs of our own. And I know for me personally, when I come home after a long day, tough day, like I just feel so happy just getting to see them. And when we would go on these hospital visits, um, they had just a volunteer program where people would bring in their own pets that they could, you know, bring into, into like, a, um, like a gathering room, like a game room or whatever it is for the kids to see. But they, you know, they couldn't really go into kids' rooms, you know, just for different reasons. And there was a, there was a therapy dog program at uh, OU Children's in, in uh, Oklahoma City that we had gone and, and seen, and they had some really great dogs there. And I was telling my wife, I was just like, how cool would it be if, you know, we could get a full-time program there at, uh, at the Children's Hospital of Orange County at Chalk. Um, so we did, uh, we had a couple races. We called them, we called it the Pup Cup. They were like, we called it a 5K9. So it was a, a, a 5K oh, nice. that you could run, <laughs> run with your dogs. Uh, we had all kinds of, you know, like different things, you know, there to help raise money and ended up, uh, it took us a couple years. And COVID kind of slowed it down a little bit, but finally got a, you know, got a therapy dog that's that's been there for a couple couple years now. Her name's uh, Lois, and she had been there, you know, for a couple years. And we got to got to go back, you know, as a visiting team and go visit her and see how um, see how she was interacting with the kids. And it's just great. I mean, she can do so many things. She can go in there when a kid's having like you know a little minor operation or you know just needs to cheer him up, or she can go to the you know, go to the um, the guest, like like I said, the game rooms and guest room kind of thing there. And I just know how much dogs, you know, cheer up my wife and I. Our dogs cheer us up. And I know that, you know, for those kids in a tough time being being in the hospital, maybe even having pets of their own that they can't see because they can't go home, um, you know, how much that brightens their day. And so that was something that we wanted to, to bring to them full time. Well, Rangers fans are all glad that you're here, yep. and we're already seeing multiple people text in that they would love to hear you on the show more often. So we're glad you're here and appreciate your time very much, good sir. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you guys for having me on, and let's, we'll definitely do it again. All right, there you Polkashevsky! go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah!